Today we are meeting here in Benun. I'm Roberta Bacic and I'm from Chile and I'm the collector and curator of Conflict Textiles. We are here today to record Following the Footsteps of the Disappeared, an exhibition that aims at portraying the quest of the relatives and friends and different organizations that work for finding the bodies and do justice in these terrible circumstances. Because the collection is made of textiles, we wanted that we have this film to support the exhibition that will be online due to COVID-19. We have an installation, La Villa de la Memoria de Hernan, Hernan's memory box, and that relates to the Videla regime and one of the 9,000 people who would have disappeared, Hernan. He was a 26-year-old student at the Faculty of Architecture in Buenos Aires, and he was abducted by the Navy Task Forces on the 27th of October, 1977, when he was dropping his mother, Juana, to work. Uh, he was paralysed from an accident he'd had the previous year, used crutches and was prone to infections. So, wore bandages obviously. So his mother Juana gave textile artist Anna Zlatkis his yellowing bandage and that's what Anna has used for this installation. She made a cardboard memory box and in that there is a page from his brother Jaime's book. Jaime was a lawyer who took part in a relentless search of justice for his brother Hernan and many other people up to the ninth who would have disappeared. So it's uh, an amazing process. Our purists, they would stitch the story I sort of stitch the words, link in with the maker. And in this case, you know, it was linking in with Jaime, Hernan's brother, who was the lawyer, and bringing all of that, the memory from the past to the present, 40 years later. We've been working with Conflict Textiles over the last three years. We've been engaged in a creative exchange of ideas and objects. And within the Troubles and Beyond exhibition that I curated at the Ulster Museum, we have a permanent feature of textile art where we rotate pieces from the Conflict Textiles collection. And this enables us to explore a range of interpretive themes and perspectives. So our latest collaboration with Conflict Textiles has been following the footsteps of the disappeared. And we have plans next year to have a display within the Ulster Museum that will mark the 10th anniversary of the International Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearance. We also plan in future to have a larger scale collaborative exhibition drawing on the wider Conflict Textiles collection in one of our galleries in the future. The Conflict Textiles are important in a number of different ways. Most significantly they tell us stories and they tell us stories of political violence and what has happened in countries that have suffered from repression, from oppression, from dictatorships. And that's important because it has a historical significance, it's important because it has a cultural significance, and it's also important because it has a research significance in that it tells us about the dynamics of conflict and how we can compare that across different countries. So we're a key academic partner in this process, and as part of that we'll be adding a series of seminars exploring different themes within the conflict textiles, as well as looking how we might be able to develop a research agenda around this important collection. Another significant part of this process is going to be installing a permanent exhibition within the library at the McGee campus. And part of that is to share the learning from these textiles with our students and with the community who visit the university. And each semester we'll be changing the conflict textiles within the library and that will allow us to explore different themes but also different countries so that we can enhance learning on the campus that comes with these textiles. So from 2008 Ulster University has been working with Conflict Textiles to develop uh, an online web presence for Conflict Textiles. This has been made possible because of Ulster University's Kane resource. Kane Conflict Archive on the Internet um, is the premier international resource about the troubles in and about Northern Ireland and is very widely respected. Working with the Kane team and their expertise, Conflict Textiles now has a website which is an associated site of Kane. This gives Conflict Textiles access to the skills and expertise of the Kane staff and also to the huge um, audience who visit Kane on a regular basis. 
So Conflict Textiles has a unique database that is fully searchable. You can search by textiles, you can search by textile artists, you can search by events and activities. Um, this online presence has greatly enhanced the work of Conflict Textiles, so it allows researchers, textile artists, voluntary community sector groups around the world to come to the site to see the textiles, to engage with them, and to engage with the Conflict Textiles teams. So through this online presence, we've been able to make new friendships, we've been able to develop collaborations, and we've gone on many exciting adventures. So here is one piece from Peru and another piece which is from Zimbabwe. And if anything this exhibition teaches us is that this suffering is shared across the globe for families of the disappeared. And this exhibition, more than anything else, is really a testimony to the families and their suffering and their protest and the change that they've tried to make in the world. We would like to dedicate this exhibition to the relatives of the families of the disappeared who have for years and years looked for their loved ones and compelled us to engage with them in their prayer for justice and truth. Mm -hmm.